Hello everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to the logical journey of the Zumbinis. We are taking on the last world of the game, the Mountains of Despair, on the very, very hard difficulty. The three logical puzzles that await us today are utterly insane, through every sense of the word. So grab your popcorn, <laughs> sit back, relax, and watch as I struggle to solve these diabolical puzzles. The Zumbinis creep carefully through the spooky mountain tunnels until they come to a dimly lit cavern. The Lion's Lair. Dang, I got goosebumps from that. So this first one is... interesting, to say the least. Yeah... You see what I see? Nothing. The Lion's Lair, level 4. The stone lion requires a certain order from the Zumbinis before they can pass. To move the lion's paw, the Zumbinis must be grouped together and sorted by two attributes, such as nose color and hairstyle. One attribute is primary and tells you the groupings of Zumbini by family. The second attribute is secondary and tells you the order within the family. For example, you may need to first line Zumbinis up by nose color, of all the Zumbinis with the same colored nose, you may need to arrange them by hairstyle. Use the information you get from wrong guesses to help you on your next try. For a greater challenge, there are no symbols on the wall to provide clues. Thankfully, we've got seven pegs in the wall, so we can afford six goof-ups before we need to stop messing up. So let's try little lady here. Okay, well, it put her back, and that put her back as well. Oh, okay, wow. Okay, so nose color is very, very important. Uh, let's put this guy in the front. Okay. Is blue in the back. Is blue in the back. Okay, blue's in the back. Feet don't matter. It's either by eyes or by hair. Let's see, the two and then one in front. So let's try eyes. Okay. Okay, okay. So I'm, well, I guess that could have been hair as well. Wait, no, it couldn't have been hair because he's in front of her up here, so it's eyes. All right, so it looks like sleepy eyes in the back, then Cyclops, then glasses, then sunglasses. Where normal eyes come into play, I don't know. Let's try sleepy-eyed red nose. No. Alright, that's fine. Oh, I'm an idiot. There's another blue-nosed guy here. Alright, well, sleepy-eyed orange... Not sleepy-eyed orange nose. Okay, sleepy-eyed orange nose goes up here. Oh boy. All right. Well, you can go in front. Her. Okay. I don't know where norm what, where normal eyes come into play here. This is problematic. Oh boy. No. Dog on it. Okay. So I now have a 50/50 shot essentially at getting this right. I have to pray that normal eyes come before cyclopses. Nope. Of course not. I do not like that puzzle because, thankfully, it's the first one in the order, but it's just way too much random chance. Alright, Lady Luck. Nope. And when stupid stuff like that happens, it's like... It's really annoying. Alright, well maybe it's springs in the back? Nope! Not springs. It's also not green nose. Maybe sunglasses up there? And glasses in the back? We could try glasses in the back. Glasses in the back! That seems to work. Alright, so there are three types of eyes in front. That's probably going to be normalized. Yeah, that's got to be normalized. Okay. And 
he has to go into the front. Oh, it's based by Hairdo. It's based by Hairdo. Okay. Alright, so spiky haired guys have to go before bald guys. Bald guys have to go before green hat hair. Okay, okay. Let's see. Green hat hair in the front. Oh boy. Okay, well, piecing together what we know. Spiky hair tends to go in the back. Okay, and oh, we don't have any knowledge on ponytail haired guys. Great. Yeah, be prepared to lose this one a lot. Like I said, thankfully it's the first one in the group, so if you lose it, you can just retry it. But it's because there's the two groups that you have to deal with, it's really annoying. And you, it's so easy to just put them in the wrong spot by based on one. Like that! There is no way for me to know. Because the very least they could do is put them in the first place that they could possibly go. But no, it's a random place where they could go. So, like, I put her there. If they had put her here, that would be really useful. Because that would basically be like, oh, you failed to put them in the right spot. They're going to go essentially to the highest spot in the line where they can actually go. Nope. That doesn't work. Alright, it's not feet, it's not nose, it's either eyes or it's hair. It appears to be hair. So what makes her more special? If only I knew. How many bowl cuts do we have here? Oh, really, only one? I'm gonna guess Ponytail Lady goes there, cool. Bowl cut dude goes there. Now we've got four spots up there. Could be either one of these. I'm going to say spiky hair in the back. Yeah. And I'm going to say eyes are what we're going off of. Wait, no, it's not eyes. Can't be eyes. Um, feet, then. I'm going to say it's feet that we're going off of. That seems to be right. Now, do springs come before? Yes, springs come before... Propellers come first. Then springs. And then bicycles. Cool, got lucky that time, so we can go through. Whoa, my, you've done exceptionally well. Mr. Lion, I do not like that puzzle. It's not very logical. Use the crystal filters to change the Zumbini's reflection. It will give them crystal slamming protection. Oh boy. The mirror machine is about to get insane. <laughs> Might not look much different than before, but it is. Mirror machine level 4. The mirror machine requires matching reflections in the center crystal before allowing Zumbinis to pass. Zumbinis are sent through two at a time, so it is necessary to place filters that will successfully transform both Zumbinis. Place the attribute filters in an order that will transform the Zumbini images and make this possible. You can place up to three filters on either side of the central crystal. For example, a filter with shaggy hair will transform the ponytail hair of a Zumbini to shaggy hair. When you're ready, place the correct filters on either side of the central crystal and then click the lever. If the projected images are identical, the Zumbini will pass to the other side. If not, the Zumbini will be knocked back to the Shade Tree base camp. Some filters display changing attributes and the transformation will vary based on the image of the Zumbini. For example, a filter with blinking hair styles will change the hairstyle of the Zumbini, but the transformation will be different depending on the original ha hairstyle of the Zumbini. So yeah, basically like very hard, except you've got the Zumbini here and the Zumbini back here, the Zumbini filter here and the Zumbini filter back there. When we pull that lever, this Zumbini is going to go through, the next one is going to pop up, and immediately this is going to turn around, and then they're going to be forced through as well. So we have to put up filters that will successfully make both of these uh, Zumbinis match both of those filters. <laughs> Not fun. So for example, this guy's got roller skates, that guy's got roller skates. This guy's got uh, pink shoes, that guy's got roller skates. We need this guy to have roller skates. Thankfully there are roller skates right there. 
That will also turn them to normal eyes. If we put normal eyes on that side, their eyes are going to match. So now, the, both of these Zumbinis are going to have the same hair as both of those Zumbinis. They're both going to have the same eyes, but their nose is going to be different. So now we've got to figure out the nose situation. Well, we can put that filter there and that filter there. So, checking one at a time, this Zumbini will have spiky hair, that Zumbini will have spiky hair, he'll have glasses, he'll have glasses, he'll have an orange nose, he'll have an orange nose, he'll have roller skates, he'll have roller skates. So that one's good. Second Zumbini, spiky hair, spiky hair. Glasses, glasses. Orange nose, orange nose. Roller skates, roller skates. So that's good. If we pull the lever, you're going to see what happens. Notice where my mouse cursor is. It's automatic. Yep, this just got a lot more fun. So, it's very difficult. But, at the same time, I'm not sure if it's as difficult as the last difficulty. Because you have to do two at a time, the filters tend to be more straightforward. And because you have to do two at a time, you get through it almost twice as fast. So, I actually might like this one better than the very hard difficulty. Alright. Looking at this, their noses are going to be the same and their feet are going to be the same. These guys need to have a bowl cut. That's changed now. All we need to do is get their eyes right. So... If we do that, he's going to get a bald head. And if we do this, he's going to get a ponytail. Well, if he gets a ponytail there, we can do this. So keep in mind, you really have to watch out for the flashing filters on this one. Because, for example, this is a flashing hair filter. If these two Zumbinis have different hairstyles, that filter is going to change for each one of them. Thankfully, if they have the same hairstyle as they do, we know that's going to be a ponytail for both of them. So that's going to be a ponytail on this side for both of them. Ponytail on that side for both of them. Glasses on this side for both of them. Glasses on that side for both of them. Blue nose for both of them on both sides. And the same feet. This is a tough one. The entire Mountains of Despair is just ridiculous on the highest difficulty. Because of course you have to go through it every single time. Alright, their feet are not matching up. And we've got flashing filters. That'll change to a sprain. That'll change to roller skates. Excellent. So what's annoying here is we can't check what that filter is going to change into based on the bow tie. I'm here to tell you the bow tie will change into pink shoes, so you do have to do that. But it's a bit of a blind risk. These two have green nose. These two have different colored noses. We need a green nose here. So that will give them green hat hair on that side, actually. If we do that, they're going to get a bowl cut on each side, and we need to change their eyes. That's what I see. I'll change them to glasses, then I'll change them to a cyclops head eye, then I'll change them to sleepy. Uh, yeah, so this is really complicated. <laughs> but with all these filters in place, both sides are going to have a bowl cut. They have sleep, both of them have sleepy eyes. Because these guys both have the same color eyes, the first filter will always be a Cyclops, which will make the second filter always sleepy eyes, so that'll match it perfectly for both of them. Everyone's gonna have a green nose, and everyone's gonna have matching feet. Immensely complicated, that. And again, you just have to kind of hope that that filter's gonna turn right, because it's more skates now, and then it turns into pink shoes, but there was no way for us to test that. So this one's pretty evil. This one's very evil. Oh, okay. And... We've got two springs on this side, but different types of shoes on that side. So we gotta make those shoes match. Only way to do that is to put the shoes on each side. Now, because these guys have the same eyes, and one of these is flashing eyes, we're gonna do that. So now the eyes are gonna be consistent on both sides. But if we do that. There we go. So again, these two filters have the same type of eye. 
which means the flashing filters are going to be the same for both of them, which means they're both going to have tired eyes, they're both going to have the same nose, because the noses just happen to line up, they're both going to have pink shoes, and they're both going to have the same type of hair. A lot of checking needs to be done for that. <laughs> We need to give this guy a propeller, so the propellers match up. Now we need to give them the same nose and the same... Actually, they have the same hair. Oh, they have the same hair. That's amazing. Okay. If we do this, that changes it to sleepy eyes, and that'll be the constant across both of them. Then that'll change it to glasses. This filter will ch also change it to glasses. Yay! All right. It's the same type of eye for the ref uh, reflections. These will be the same. They'll both have glasses. They'll both have glasses. Their hair happens to match up. They're both going to have an orange nose. And everyone's going to have a propeller. Ooh. This is not twice as fast as very hard. Because you, it's, there's a lot more thinking and checking that has to go into it. But it does go, I believe, slightly faster than very hard. All right, nose and feet line up. Hair and eyes do not. Oh, well, that's easy to line up. Just as a check, they're both going to have sunglasses, they're both going to have hair, or ponytail, and they're going to put... Yep. That was the simple one. I probably go overboard with the checking, but there have been too many times when I've played this casually that I've just missed one feature, and then you've got to do everything all over again in the Mountains of Despair, which is not good. Okay, you need Red Nose to be constant across that. You... let's see... We have a bald head, and then followed by that, that gives them green hat hair. That gives them a bowl cut. Okay. All right. So we've got a solid spiky-haired filter, and then a solid bald head, so bald on that side. They both have ponytails, so for the first flashing filter, it'll be constant as a bowl cut. The second flashing filter will also be constant, and that'll be a bald tuft. So they're both bald, they're both going to have sunglasses, they're both going to have red noses and their feet in the lineup. Cool. Literally cool because he's wearing sunglasses. Oh man. All right, feet line up. We need actually because we've got two different purple noses. Maybe we can line that up a different way. Let's try lining up their hair first. Okay, yeah, sure enough. Flash filter on that side. We'll do that. Flash filter on that side will be. Oh, I know. So that lines up the... Alright, so they're all going to have bikes. They're all going to have purple noses. They're all going to have glasses. And they're all going to have spiky hair. Cool. That'll be the exact same image both times. Fortunate for Zumbinis that you are their guy. Oh man. Okay, that, that requires a lot of brain power to do. <laughs> but wait till you guys see the next level. My, that was a mind bender. But onward and downward they continue. I do not like the sound of that. Oh yeah, wait till you guys see Bubble Wonder Abyss. Feel like fainting yet? <laughs> oh yeah. Epic music though. Bubble Wonder Abyss, 
level 4. The Zumbinis are seeking a way across Bubble Wonder Abyss. Directional arrows and Zumbini features tell you the direction a Zumbini will move in. For example, Zumbinis will move in the direction the white arrow is pointing. If a square displays an arrow with a symbol of a Zumbini feature, such as a red nose, any Zumbini matching that feature will travel in the direction of the arrow. Those that do not match continue in their original direction. Be aware that some arrows change directions once a Zumbini has passed over it. Also notice that colored arrows will change when a Zumbini passes over a colored grid and triggers it. Plan ahead and sort the Zumbinis before sending them on their way. The order is important. Also, thanks the help function for showing off what these do, for telling us absolutely nothing. These are magic squares. You can see they're sparkling and they have a certain color. If a Zumbini hit, uh, goes on that, they will stop. They will literally stop in their bubble and stay there, get stuck there. There are only two ways you can let them out. One, if a Zumbini, if another Zumbini in a bubble hits them in their bubble, the bubbles don't pop for some reason. Instead, they will push the Zumbini out of the magic square in the direction that they're moving. So for example, if we have a Zumbini go over here and hit the magic grid here, and then we have a Zumbini come from up here and hit it, it'll push them off the grid this way and send them that way. And then the other way to get them off of that is to hit the colored trigger that matches the color of the magic square. If you do that, then the magic squares will be released and the Zuminis on them will be released and continue in the direction that they were traveling when they landed on the magic square. So, if we put a Zumini up here and hit the magic square, then hit the trigger, he would continue in that direction and enter the vortex. Whereas if we put the magic them in the magic square here and then had a Zumini come from down, push, they would push the Zumini off the square, up, they would travel up and get there, and then the Zumini who pushed them off would then get stuck in the magic square. However, then if we hit the magic, uh, the cover switch, they would continue in the direction that they arrived in, which would be going up, so they continue going up. So yeah. Bubble Wonder Abyss on very, very hard. The one nice thing is no luck involved. It's just pure skill and intelligence. If you are smart enough, you can trace through this and you can come to the solution, but it is incredibly difficult. So, yeah. If we go up, we've got this red trigger here. The red arrow points upwards. You'll hit the yellow trigger, which will switch this around. And then if you're a bow tie, you will survive. So who's a bow tie? We have bow tie. Who's a propeller? We have two propeller zumbinis. Okay, that's good. If the red arrow is pointing that way, they will die. And if the red arrow is pointing this way, they will hit this blue trigger, which could send them one of two different ways. Very complicated. If they go down, well, if they have roller skates, they'll move up and push them out. Otherwise, they will continue up, and then if they have a ponytail, they'll go there. If they have a bow tie, they'll go there. It, this is so complicated now, isn't it? <laughs> You're probably already lost and wondering, what the heck do I do? <laughs> well, look at it this way. Everybody who goes this way will survive as long as they are not a roller skates. So, who has roller skates? Only this guy has roller skates. Alright, we'll set him to the side. Literally every ever Zumbini could go this way. Now here's the thing, they can go through, but then they're stuck over here, and we have to put them that way, and as of right now, the yellow trigger will send them into their doom in the vortex. Not good, is it? However, if we have the roller skating guy here, we could send him up and hit the trigger, except then he'd hit the vortex, which is not good. So rather, what we need is we need to send somebody up into the yellow trigger who has a bow tie so they will enter that grid. Well, we got two different bow tied Zumbinis, or propellers. I call them, I use both terms. So we'll set them to the side as well. So that could be an option. We could save one of the uh, propeller Zumbinis to send up, and then they'd get stuck in the magic grid, but that would hit that, and then all the other Zumbinis could go up here. They'd gradually go into the magic grids, and all of them would go through to the exit, except two, the last two, would get stuck in these magic grids. So once they're stuck in there, we would have to release them from their magic grids by hitting these two switches. In order to do that, we would need to send them up, hope that the arrow's in the right direction, so we'll have to time it so the Zumbinis will actually go for it the night right amount of time, so that way it'll be this direction. Then if we go this way, we'll need one Zumbini with a propeller. Hey, we got two Zumbinis with a propeller, so we're covered, and then we need a Zumbini with a ponytail. We only have one ponytailed Zumbini, and that's this lady. So we set her to the side as well. So these four Zumbinis are all going to be crucial to the puzzle. But here's another thing we didn't consider. If we hit this pink trigger, 
It's true that this Zumbini, who's the last Zumbini here who gets stuck, will be released, but that first propeller Zumbini will also get released into the vortex, so we're going to need to hit them from here, which is going to require us hitting the blue trigger first, and then sending our roller skated Zumbini up here. And then, when we send the final Zumbini to hit the pink trigger, everyone will go free. So that's pretty much it, isn't it? However, one thing we need to keep in track of is exactly how many times do we have to can we hit that red trigger so it'll stop there. Keep in mind, this is where I said, if you hit a trigger or if you pass over something that'll change direction, it'll always change it clockwise. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Or actually, hang on. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve zumbinis here. So we have twelve zumbinis who can go across that way, which means twelve times we're gonna hit that button. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's not good. If we do that, if we do it 12 times, it's going to be just back to the original position. If we do it 11 times, it'll be here, and if we do it 10 times, it'll be there. So we need 10 Zuminis to go across there. Hit the switch 10 times, and then it'll be in the right position. We have 12 Zumbinis here, though, which means two Zumbinis here are going to have to go up when the red trigger's been hit enough so that it's facing this way and passed through here without falling into the vortex. In order to do that, we need to make sure none of the Zumbinis who go that way have a red nose. So this guy can't do it, but he can do it, and he can do it. So now we've got our six Zumbinis, who are our special crew. Alright, that's everything we need to know. Let's start sending these Zumbinis across. So this requires a ridiculous amount of forethought and planning ahead. But actually... It's not that bad. Once you've solved it once, it's not too hard to solve it again. Now we need to send one of our propeller Zumbinis this way. You, sir, are going to do the honors. So watch, he's going to go up, hit the yellow switch, switches both of those, and now he gets stuck in the magic field. But now these, all these Zumbinis can go up, so let's send all these guys upwards. And you'll notice we got 10 here. We're going to hit the switch 10 times. It's going to be facing to the right permanently. And now you can see they're getting stuck. And now watch. The third Zumbini is going to go move into this Zumbini and push them gently out, not popping them, but rather pushing them to freedom. So that's all 10 Zumbinis that will go across. Last switch was hit, and sure enough, our calculations were correct. It's now pointing to the right. Okay, excellent. So now what we want to do is take our two Zumbinis that are just passive and want to go to the end, and we're going to send them to the end. Now, just to make sure, they go up. They're going to hit the red uh, arrow. They're going to continue this way. They're going to go up. They're going to miss all of these because they don't fulfill any of these features, and they're just going to go to the exit. The magic field sound effect is quite annoying, though. Alright, so our next step we're going to want to do is hit that blue switch so that we're going to free this Zumbini as well as change this direction so we'll be able to save him. In order to hit the blue switch, we need to send our ponytail Zumbini next. Seriously, this this level is a masterpiece. And yep, hitting that switch will release them. So now what we want to do is send our roller skating guy so he can push him out of the way. Do, 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 do. 
such beautiful music. And yep, he's going to push him out so he can go to safety. And now if we hit the pink switch with our last Zumbini, both of these Zumbinis will be freed and sent in the proper direction towards the exit. That was a monster to deal with, but also just so much fun and just so well crafted. You've done quite well! <laughs> yes, I think I have. The place they've been seeking? A place of hope and prosperity? Zumbini! Zumbiniville population will now be 160. That's amazing. For the love of all trapped creatures everywhere, go back and free more Zumbinis! <laughs> All right, then. Oh, this looks new. This schoolhouse salutes the Zumbinis who, raised up high the lion's paw, lined up the right crystals that they clearly saw, and mastered Bubble Wonder without falling in its maw, when traveling was very, very hard. April 9th, 2018. Oh, yes. We have freed 160 Zumbinis from their terrible prison. And we have now traveled through the big, the bad, and the hungry, and the mountains of despair on every difficulty. And you can also see the deep, dark forest has now reached very hard levels of difficulty, which is what we'll be showing off in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. I hope to see you then. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.